to MC Namaskaram. Close your eyes. Deep breaths. योगे न चित्तस्य पदे न वाचाम मलम शरीर से च वैद्य के न योपा करोत्तम प्रवरम मुनीनाम पतंजलि प्राणजलि रानतोस्मी आम शांति 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 स्लोली हैंड्स ऑन द फेस Arms down, looking at the palms. So, good evening to all of you, and welcome back. And if you can switch on your camera, otherwise, I feel like I'm having a conversation with Bharata. And once I share my screen, I will be like having a conversation with myself. Right. <clears throat> okay. So, um, let me share this. So where were we? Anybody remember? Okay. So right. This is totally Right, can you all see the screen? Um, a slide? Yeah. Right, let me check the view. That view doesn't look good. And then at the top, so content. Okay, yeah, whatever. Can't help. Right. <clears throat> so remember who Patanjali was, right? He was a sage. Um, so he was excelled in three different things: grammar, Ayurveda, and yoga. Or grammar, Ayurveda. So why grammar? The, to purify the words. Why Ayurveda? To purify the body. Now what's left? To purify your mind. So these are the three things, even in Buddhism, mind, word, and body, right? You have to keep these three things very clean. Uh, so he compiled the Yoga Sutra. He did not write or invent Yoga Sutra. It has been there, but in parts, parts, um, belonging to different, different philosophies. And um, so <clears throat> he compiled it into 196. Yoga Sutra. What is a Sutra? Meaning the um, that is a presentation of something. I mean, bigger presentation, but expressed in few words. So that's why in this Sanskrit text, you just have like one word or two word, but the meaning when you break down, it's huge, right? The knowledge is vast. Um, okay. So really finding this difficult. Okay. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> we looked into chapter 1, we looked into chapter 2, we looked into chapter 3, now we are looking into chapter 4. I would say chapter 4 is something with the way how we do yoga, this is a good starting place for you, right? Okay, um, right. Then, in chapter 1, we talked about what is yoga, 
and so we said what is yoga yoga is to yoga chitta vritti nirodaha if anybody remember the meaning anybody remember the meaning yeah so there are waves in the mind so these waves get due to different different reasons and these waves are basically five types that can be clean types of thoughts that can be unclean type types of thoughts right we will i will just give you a little brief then these thoughts will basically <clears throat> take the form of your mind meaning if you get a particular craving to eat something let's say it's a food so uh, you become basically that craver that's why you will talk about it your hands will automatically go and take the uh, the serviettes and the cutlery and now you are fully prepared and if the food is not brought to your table you will scold the waiter or waiters right so you basically when there is some food or something or some thought comes to your mind what happens is if you are not in awareness your mind will become that particular form right and then basically mouth watering all these things will happen right same way if you get angry with someone all your organs will start to work in one like a monster right to react to that particular situation i remember i took the example of uh, uh, i took the example of driving in the road right so someone come and cut you in front of you in the traffic so what happens is immediately you will start scolding you will start you know throwing your hands your foot will go and hit the pedal right and then you will go and then something will happen and you will after that worry right so everybody in the room you all can hear right here see me you can right now i'm not sharing the slide but when i share the slides you guys get it right okay if there's any problem please unmute disturb in the middle we will fix it and go ahead we just started um just recapping things <clears throat> then uh, what happens is also thoughts come to your mind because of not having correct knowledge so if you don't have if you are not aware about something properly uh, what you tend to do is you tend to think about it thinking is you are basically given different different options it could be like this okay so i'm trying to call a person the person is not answering so i'm thinking okay maybe the person is sleeping maybe the person is sick maybe the person is angry with me now i start to cry <laughs> okay then what happens is you keep on thinking 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 right so these are basically what we call as the waves of your mind and that's where yoga come into picture where yoga is to cease these waves of the mind now when you say yoga yoga doesn't mean the one who do asana it doesn't mean uh, the one who is practicing a particular type of yoga so everybody in the adhyatma meaning spiritual this thing uh, spiritual journey we all call them a yogi right so that particular spiritual science you could be a buddhist you can be a hindu you can be a muslim you can be anybody but if you have chosen to study or to follow the spiritual path right it can be any teacher as well you call it basically that particular person is either yoga yogi basically called yogi there's no female or male form it's yogi right because when it comes to adhyatma or spiritual uh, basically female male it doesn't really matter it's just one soul one piece of life and how that one piece of life is reaching the bigger life form in the nature is basically what we call as the spiritual life right so just to recap i will go very slow when it comes to chapter 4 because chapter 4 you must understand right um okay so in chapter 1 just to recap right so if you look at this picture it, the picture looks beautiful right but um, on the same time it actually gives you all the types of moods how does these moods come from it's basically get originated from your mind 
how that get originated from your mind is through your sense organs. So from your birth to date, you have collected things from the surrounding, either by hearing, either by talking, smelling, tasting, touching, or thinking about it. Now, for an example, if you take a two-year-old kid, a two-year-old kid will talk the language of the father and mother, nothing else. So when the two-year-old kid come in front of you and open its her, or his mouth, we know what exactly they are talking in the house, right? So the tone, the words, uh, how intense it is, and everything basically we can understand. So basically, with so that is inputting, that is programming the child, right? So when a child is born, if the child has been raised with an acidic. Uh, the child will maybe uh, do meditation by age of two, age of three. The child will not have certain cravings. But on the same time, if a child is raised in an environment where people kill each other and all, the child will know how to use a gun by the age of two. Very well, better than us. Right? So that's how the world is happening around you. Right? So based on that, based on where you are, what your environment is, what sort of information that you gather, you basically create, create a particular database inside, which is called the memory, right? So right now, when you are living, you may be thinking about something and based on that, mind is saying, okay, this is a sad something. So be sad, be excited, be lovable, shout, be excited, surprised, right? All these things, so these are the impressions, right? So what we talked is, so chitta, we said the mind field, this has three things, manam, buddhi, ahamkara. Manam is basically how you take things. You have your eye, you have an object, manam is, uh, manam mind is working, and then you perceive. Buddhi is to say, okay, let's give a name to that. That is a tree, right? So manam part is basically the input. You take inputs. And then Buddhi will say, okay, that is a tree. Okay, that's a jack tree. And this is a mango tree. That discriminative faculty happens with the Buddhi. Ahamkara is basically what we call as the I, Mamatvaya in Singhala or in Pali, uh, or I, I-ness, the ego, right? So you see a tree, then let's say uh, there is a monkey in the tree. Then you will first identify, okay, there is a monkey on my jack tree. Now you have a problem. So now you want to catapult to chase the monkey away, right? But if it was other person's garden, if there are not only one monkey, even if there are a thousand monkeys, we really don't have a problem with it, right? Because it's not our tree. So that's where the whole bondage starts. As far as you identify things as mine, now that's where Ahamkara has done its job, right? My tree, my house, my garden, my car, my wife, my friend, my husband, right? All these things. So that's where, okay, there is a man who is flirting with another person. You don't have a problem. You just see while you are driving in the bus fault, two people are just talking, right? You really don't have a problem. You don't even mind. But what if that is my husband or my wife? There's a big problem, right? So the mind now telling, hey, now you can't just drive by, get out and do something about it, right? On the same way, let's say there is a tree. There's a thief climbing the tree, right? So we see these things when you're driving by. So there can be some coconut trees or something in some garden. Uh, so somebody is just jumping to the jumping through the wall and then climbing and uh, you are like mm, okay so some incident is happening better i should not involve myself in this let's pass by but what if it's your garden your garden when i say that's the ahamkara right then your mind is giving a different signal okay do something about it call the police right do something about it so <clears throat> That is how these are the three things inside your mind. But Patanjali didn't really go into details of it. Patanjali called the whole mind part as the mind field. 
right? So let's keep it like that. He actually made things very simple, right? Then yoga chitta vritti nirodaha, that is the second sutra, vritti meaning, so yoga is to seize the waves or the vritti of the mind. That's it. Once you seize the waves of the mind, uh, let's see what is going to be the result, right? So what are these vrittis? These can be either afflicting or tormenting, distressing or painful things. Or it can be untroubling, undisturbing, unafflicting things. Who is trying to enter the room? Why can't I see that? I don't know. Okay, I think that's fine. By the way, who is Mohan? Somebody that I know or somebody that I don't know? Mohan, Mohan. I think it's mine. I think you know him. Dushanti. Oh, hi Dushanti. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. You have two things, right? Okay, going on. Okay, okay, good. Sorry about it. Okay. Then, right. So, so afflicting, tormenting, distressing things can be painful, right? So, it can be a painful memory. Painful memory, of course, destroys your day, right? It can destroy your future decisions as well. And it, more importantly, it can destroy your present moment. So, I heard from a teacher recently, if you have a painful memory, what you should be doing is go into meditation, right? Go into meditation, take that thought out, right? Take that thought out and find the root. Find what exactly is the seed or the problem. See, if there is a distressing or a painful memory, if it keep on disturbing, that means you are not over with that problem, right? Suddenly in the middle of the night, you suddenly wake up like a ghost and then, you know, you want to hit somebody. And if that is happening, that there is a big problem, right? So some problem is not finished yet. So you sit down, sit down in a cross leg, right? Maybe in the early morning, it doesn't matter. Then take nice, breathe in, breathe out, and then take that memory. Okay, so I was upset in the night because of this particular situation. Why? Because I saw this per person in my dreams. Then I woke up. Is it a ghost or what? Right? Then why did I why do I see this person constantly? Right? What is the business I have with this person? Okay, so I had, let's say, a work-related issue. So then, okay, so work-related issue, what was it? Was it a fight? Was it a, some political issue at the workplace? Something like that. So what happened? Okay, this person escalated to my boss saying that I did not deliver this report on time because of one, two, three, four reasons. And my boss, you know, degraded my performance ratings, right? Because of that, I lost my bonus, something like that. And because I lost my bonus, I was planning to buy a car that year. This guy ruined it, right? And my loved ones are complaining, you you still didn't buy the car likewise. And because of that, every time somebody is talking about a car, I get this person to my mind and I get furious, right? And with that fury, I go to bed and then I see this person in the night. I disturb my sleep and then I wake up, right? So then you need to keep on questioning and at a point you will have to accept it. At a point when you keep on questioning, 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 you will have to ex accept what's going on. Yeah, yeah, you will have to accept what some, some part of it, right? So <clears throat> you might have, okay, fine, that was okay, right? Okay, that was my mistake or yes, I had, a lot to do with that. Did I apologize to the relevant people? Did I did I try to make it right? Have I done everything that I can do from my side? If I have done, that's then not my problem anymore. It's somebody else's problem, right? So I should not worry. So likewise, you have to have certain full stops. 
Otherwise, these distressing, painful things will start torment and will, you know, it will kill your present moment. Right? Then the other ones are the untroubling, undisturbing. So these are not disturbing. When you get these thoughts, you will not you know, suddenly, you know, if you get your pet to your mind, you will not either jump up or you will not cry. Right? It doesn't really matter. So you get your pet to your mind. Oh, yeah, okay, this guy, okay, that's fine. Something like that. Right? But these things keep on coming and going. So that's the nature of the mind. Right? So the next one is basically to seize these things. So you one is you can't seize these problems if things have not come to a full stop. Right? And the things where it doesn't really disturb you, but just keep on roaming in your head. Now that's where the techniques come into the picture. Right? So these are caused by these different vrittis are caused by, we said there are five things. One is correct knowledge. Right. One is contrary or illusion. So we think it is like this, the rope and the snake example. Right. Then we call doubt, delusion, deluded. You see something and you see, oh my God, that is so beautiful. Such a beautiful person, such a beautiful vehicle, all this kind of thing. You are just deluded. Right. Inside it, it's the same engine. It's the same mechanism which is working on just like a car. You may it call a Maruti, may it call a Mercedes, it still can take you from A to B, right? Nidra is a state of emptiness. And then Smriti, Smith, it's not Smith, it's Smriti, right? That's memory, right? So all, for all of these, the root is the desire, right? The desire, right? Tanha, right? So desire can be that desire can be looking for love, looking for happiness, looking for contentment, looking for anger, looking for revenge, right? We have desires for revenge as well, right? Sometimes we have a desire to forget somebody, right? So that is also a desire, right? So these desire is a root for all these five different fluctuations in the mind which will keep on disturbing you, which will keep on creating films in your uh, mind, right? So how to go for it is basically, once you learn the techniques, you have to keep on practice. Abhyasa is practice. Vairagya is basically go beyond, go beyond the raga. Vairagya, vairagya right? So you have a raga, which is a desire. Go beyond that desire, right? not to suppress the desire. So somebody will say, ah, oh, don't do this, right? Then you will say, okay, thank you very much. I will not do that. But when you go, when you move like that, what happens is, you, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, you will always have a curious factor inside your mind, right? There is a curious factor um, thinking, how is this? How is that? Likewise, so better you experience it then and then you go ahead. So in even um, in this. Um, punished, right? Uh, before you start, they say there are three types of people. Number one is there are saints and sages who have said you do these things, you don't do these things. So the first type of people will take their word. Yes, this is right. This is wrong or this I should do this. I should not do. And then they will follow the life like that. So for an example, one would say, OK, don't kill another human. Right. That will disturb your life. Right. So the person will. Yes, that is correct. So or I would not say correct. I accept it. I will not do that. Right? That is the first type of people. Second type of people who is waiting in the meeting room. Oh, Jayanthan on video mode. How are you? Good to see you, man. Uh, good. Dunanji Jayanandana. Hmm. I can't I accept. Why can't I hit the accept button? 
You're sharing your screen, so that might. Oh, OK. I think it comes in the post. OK, that's fine. Uh, good. Then. Yeah, so the second type of people. Sage, Saint, Veda, Upanish, everything will say this is doable. This is not doable. You will want to do it and get into the trouble and learn and come out and say, Oh God, I don't want to do this anymore. Right? So these are the second type of people. They will look like these people, which I'm pointing. Okay? So, so those are the second. So first type is, once the instructions are given, I will just follow it. That's it. So those people will not have the curious factor. Okay? So sometimes they will say, okay, fine. This is how it is to be done. This is how to cook. That's fine. You will not want to increase the amount of salt and see whether the taste changes. No, you will just carry on, right? Second type of people, they will, you know, how much you tell? No, we want to get into the mud. We want to, you know, experience the mud, right? And then cry and come out of it. Most of us are like that, including myself sometimes, right? Can't help. Then the third type of people are how much you say, how much you experience, you will keep on doing the same thing, right? So these are some of the people who are in jail for like multiple issues, arrested in multiple times, and they are spending their life there for like ages, right? So you do something, you messed up, then you get out of it. But after some time, you forget about it. Then you again get into it and you mess up and you get out of it, right? So these type of people are there, right? So you need to, first of all, you need to understand where is the path to go. And then based on that, you basically need to either experience it or some way or the other, you need to go beyond that, right? You should not get stuck at some point, right? So one more thing is something that I learned recently as well. So what is depression? Right? Depression is basically now our thoughts are flowing, right? So today morning when I woke up, let's say there was a very sad news came to me. Somebody has passed away, right? So I was sad about it, right? Then um, I did I, I I did my whatever the morning work that I had to do, let's say some office work, and then you wash your face, and then you change your clothes, and then you got into something and you carry on with your day, right? But depression is in your mind, now you heard the bad news, in your mind you're stuck there. So the mind is stopped at that problem. So that will throughout the day, throughout the week, everything and anything what you do, you will start to forget, forget things, right? You will not do everything. You will forget the timings. You will go to places late, right? Even if you're supposed to take a decision, that would not be the right decision because that particular factor is affecting. That particular mind is affecting all your decisions, right? And then when you live that for a long time, your whole lifestyle actually changes, right? So you might see a person who is depressed suddenly when you see them, right? So let's say you are seeing a friend after five years and you get to know this person is depressed. When you see, you see, oh my God, this person has lost weight, lost hair, lost the skin color, lost the, I mean, the way the person uh, is wearing has changed, right? If everything has changed, why that happens is because that person has been living or stuck with that particular problem for a long time and it has deprioritized everything else in their life because that particular thought has affected, right? So that is what you call as depression. So, I mean, if you are a yoga practitioner or whatever, Learn to look at things in a bird's eye view, right? Look at a problem like another matter, right? You look into that and finish it off, right? And then you go beyond that. That is important. 
right? So what Abhyasa and Vairagya are we supposed to do? We can do meditation. There are multiple uh, types of techniques given. So then you can go to this Rupa Vachara states to Arupa Vachara state, cognitive or cognitive, and the body less, form less. So that's where you reach the wisdom. Then we also talk about in chapter one itself, the challenges for yoga, right? So if you're sick, can you do yoga? No. So likewise, there were vyadi. There were likewise, there were few, 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 few things. Okay. <laughs> then moving, right? So in chapter two, so right. Chapter two, what we talked about it is sadhana pada. So first of all, first one we call as samadhi pada. So sadhana pada is very simple. Patanjali basically adopt the Raja Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga. So he talked about Yam, Niyam, Asana, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Right? What is Yam? Is it Mr. Yama, the king who is going to punish you? Right? No. So Yam, we talked about it. Niyam. Niyam means like a Niyama, like a something that you should do, like a theorem. Right? So likewise, yam are things that you should restrain, right? Not do, not do in the sense, uh, be away from them, right? So don't harm, so be, I mean, uh, yeah. So don't harm anyone and then uh, be honest, truthful, moderation, non-stealing, non-attachment. Then niyam, cleanliness, Cleanliness in where? In your face and hair? Not there. From your word, cleanliness. What you think, cleanliness. And everything. Cleanliness in everything, right? There's no point, you know, you do something that, okay, there is an arms giving. You uh, give certain things and in the mind you are thinking, oh, you have spent so much of money for this, <laughs> right? No point doing that. Then tapas. Tapas is basically burning your karma, right? Swadhyaya, self-study, and Ishvara Pranidhana is surrender to the God. So uh, don't get into this way of think like, you know, I am a Buddhist, I don't have a God. I am a Hindu, I do have a God. I am Muslim, I have an Allah. All this, no. If you really look at it, it's just one notion. Right? All these are just different, different streams of water coming to the same ocean. So you call whatever the word you want to call to God. You can call it nature. You can call it the ultimate truth. Right? You can call it dharma, whatever. Then, asana. Why should you do asana? What could asana give you? Right? Basically, that will help you. One is the posture. Right? So this is a vehicle. The vehicle needs servicing, maintenance and all. So asana practices will help you to basically maintain the vehicle. And also, not only that, asana have multiple things. Number one is the posture. Number two is the movement or uh, let's say the breath, movement and holding. Holding there. When you come to another, okay, I did the padahasta asana and immediately you come out. No, you have to Go to the Padahastasana and wait there, right? So breath is important, movement is important, and maintaining the posture is important. That will help you to live in the present moment. You can't do yoga asana while your mind is all over the place. When your mind is all over the place, doing yoga asana will help you to bring the mind to one place. Right? Then pranayama, pranavayu. Stop breathing, see what happens. Don't experiment it, right? So whatever the pranavayu that you are getting, send it to the right places, right? Send it to the right places. Learn to do how to breathe in, breathe out to maximize the use of the body. Right? Then pratyahara, turn inside, right? So don't always keep on looking things outside. Rather, why don't you look everything inside? Right? Inside, everything is there. Then, dharana is concentration. So, we said dharana is concentration, 
dhyana is concentration for a long time samadhi is you concentrate to a level where there is no myself is left right so you will basically reach with all the living beings so this patanjali explains in the second chapter right so once you do this patanjali in the third chapter which is in this particular slide show right so he talks about everything that we can achieve right by going into different different uh, so focusing on different different things how you can get this high mental states higher mental states so those are what patanjali talks in uh, the third chapter right so you have like 20 videos when you have time just go through it's important to go through uh, to understand what these are okay so now let's come to today's problem statement right so what is our real problem why do we need yoga why do we need any type of religion in this world why do we need saints why do we need teachers and uh, what 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 exactly is the problem right so people are fighting people are fighting war right why don't you say okay it's good it's a good life it's a good way of living right but we don't say that we see a problem with that right and sometimes a person is worrying somebody is crying so let the person cry so what right but that doesn't seem right okay and then um, when when so when you close your eyes what is coming to your mind right million thoughts okay and uh, so recently there was a nice story so there was a cup group of people who were meditating right and then suddenly one person a foreign person started crying crying real loud while meditation now this became a big problem to everyone right so then um, they basically asked why you cried then the foreigner said he's from britain or somewhere um i felt like a mosquito bit me so the person was meditating in sri lanka right i felt like so this is like 15 years back so no mobile phones i felt uh, a mosquito biting me and then 8 years back i have read about malaria in sri lanka then i pictured myself in a hospital dying and then my flight i have missed then when the flight landed in britain my parents have been waiting and then they identified that i am not there and they were crying they were so sad by getting this thought i suddenly got tears to my eyes and i cried right but actual situation is there has not been even a mosquito so what has happened is from the moment this person closed his eyes right now i'm watching i close my eyes immediately i start to think about oh my god there is no electricity here the place is not properly ventilated there is no mosquito protection here there can be malaria in sri lanka this is asia all over the place you have malaria dengue this one that one and the other what if i die here who is going to look after my children who is going to look after my car this is what when you so you are sitting in front of the meditation teacher and you close your eyes this is what is running in your mind right so all what i told right now are based on past predicting the future based on past so in the past now there is a worrying memory right worrying memory is knowing about malaria right and you are predicting that i might die right so if you really see in a particular moment right now at this moment either we are disturbed through our sad or worrying or happy or angry memories all our data warehouses we have thoughts and for each of those thoughts those thoughts are either happy unhappy or not happy not unhappy 
right? And we have worries, doubts as well in the past as well, right? So sometimes you must have committed something and then it hasn't worked. And now you are still worrying about it, right? So that is the past. And with these past, all what you have in the memory warehouse, now you are predicting your future, right? Um, I am a person like this. I will not give this to this person. What if this person uh, asked me something like this? And uh, what about my job, right? I will not uh, go into this particular area of work. Um, what if my organization, you know, right now the banking sector is coming down, uh, the economy is not doing well, Albert Uncle is in London and he's not coming to rescue us. So because of that, the whole economy is going to go down, then I will lose my job, then how can I uh, feed my family, I will have to, you know, sell my house, all these things are basically in the future, right? So, where does our life actually exist, right? This is about chapter four. Right, right now, where does our life exist, right? Is it in the past or in the future, right now? Who invented time? Who invented time? Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Buddha, Pranayana, Mahinda, who invented time? Charles, right? So time is just a variable we have invented, right? Otherwise, this whole planet, if you take, everybody right now is living. Maybe somebody is sleeping, maybe somebody is doing some work, somebody is studying, somebody is meditating, somebody is doing yoga. Whatever it is, right now only everything happens, right now. Right? So if my hair is getting grey, that is happening right now. It did not start actually one year back. Or it will not get fully white colour in 10 years time. It's happening all right now. This 10 year, 2 year, 1 hour, all these are subsets that we have developed. Agreed or not? This color, what do you call it? If I ask, right? I'll just stop share. Let's see the answer. Right? Janthan, what color is this? Janthan is all like, all slow motion. What color is this? I think it's uh, gray or blue. Must be blue because uh, you used to wear blue, so I think it's blue. Ah, see, now you answered not being in the present. You gave a past answer. Because I usually wear blue, it could be blue. Otherwise, your answer is gray. Your answer is gray, okay? Yeah. Good. So, Dushanti, you're wearing your specs, right? Good. What color am I wearing? Gray if I'm not color blind. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Bharata, what color am I wearing? Uh, looks like it's gray. Uh, Amal. My God. For me. <laughs> Nelushi, what color am I wearing? I think it's blue. It's blue. <laughs> it's blue. Right. <laughs> It's blue, right? So some of you, basically, uh, some of you, if I ask, what color am I wearing? You can like this say blue, right? Because I used to wear blue, you can say it's blue. See, I don't know. It's basically <laughs> blue. I think you have right? It's light like blue. Hmm? I think I washed it many times. So are you saying that I'm wearing an old cloth? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> right. Light so effect. Huh? light effect. Yeah, yeah. Let's call it light effect. Let's not call it old. Right. <laughs> Actually, this is six or seven years old. That's fine. Uh, so I still like it. So Jantan, you're correct. Right. So 
So you answered based on my previous preferences. Right? Some of you answered guess. You basically guessed the answer. But whatever you answered, it's just a word in English. You can call it gray, blue. What if this color we name it as red? Then it'll be red, right? It'll be red, right? So it's just a word. It's just a language. Right. So language again we use because we are a little intelligent than the other animals. So we have developed it to communicate with each other. Right. But dogs also communicate. A dog can communicate with you without talking. Has, a, has any dog talked to you before? But it knows how to say I'm hungry or there's somebody outside. Go and check. Right. Or pat me. All these things they know, right? So language is a subset developed by humans, right? So <clears throat> based on different different things outside there, you will give basically naming to that. Based on those naming, you will have certain um, emotions about them, right? Certain statements, memories about them. Then those things go to your mind and then it will keep on, you know, it will mix it everything and then give an output. Right. So right now only exist. Today morning we did yoga. Right. Was it in the past? Or present or in future? Past, present, future, first of all, these are just words. First of all, the past, present and future, whatever we're talking, these are just words. Right, so we OK, so we have done yoga also. So we have done yoga, so those are also past tense. We do yoga, that's it. Right, so right now what exists is your present only. Right. So do not, we should not, we all should not exploit the superior brain given to us against us. Right. That is important. So coming back. Right. So you being here right now you will live this moment to the maximum if you are conscious only. You will live, you are living the present moment only. And that present moment you will live to your maximum if you are conscious about it only. How to, that's where we say, before even we start a uh, yoga session, we close our eyes. I take this example multiple times, but I do it with a reason. So you close your eyes and then when you close your eyes and if you are still, if you are not moving, if you're not talking, if you have closed your eyes as well, then what is the only happening thing, right? So because when you close your eyes, all external world doesn't exist inside your head right now. When you close your eyes, you don't know what's happening outside. You don't perceive things inside. Right? If at all you will hear something and you will predict, but it may not be happening outside. You don't have your eyes to validate it. And whatever you, your eyes are seeing, how can you say that's correct as well? Somebody can ask. Right? We uh, went to some other time, remember uh, this one. This is how the human sees. This is how the cat sees. This is how a goldfish see the same picture. This is how a rat sees. This is how a fly sees. This is how a mosquito sees. Such poor eyesight mosquito is having. So when you kill the mosquito, how the mosquito may be feeling, right? I just came like this tongue, right? Right? So, even your vision now, we, we think human vision is superior than all of it. But what if it's not the case? 
right? Whose vision is right? Dolphin's vision is right, goldfish vision is right, or human vision is right. We assume it's human vision, right? Good. So, uh, yeah, so Kaivalya father, uh, basically Kaivalya is another word for liberation, um, nirvana, moksha, whatever it is, you merge with the ultimate truth, ultimate nature, right? So what is merging with ultimate nature is basically we have a body build up of flesh and water and some chemicals, right? At the point that we die, the body is there, the same, right? Just that even you don't call it the name. When I die, you will call my home and ask, uh, has, uh, have, have you received the body? Is the body at home? Right? You won't ask, uh, has Amal reached home? Then my home people will start to cry again. Amal left. Why are you asking? He reached. He left already. Right? So, when you die, none of your loved ones, not so loved ones, nobody is going to uh, call that particular body with your name. It's called the body. Right? Why? The identity or the unique factor which was inside, which caused to function, has left. It's not there anymore. Right? So when this particular electricity kind of a thing inside your body, it functions. Right now, see, all of us are functioning. Dushant is watching like this. Jayantan is watching like this. Bharata is watching like this. And Niluji is watching Ayyo, <laughs> like this. So all this is basically functioning. Right? So when this particular thing goes out of the body, these particular physical forms that we are having right now are still there. All what you and I see are still there, just that they are not moving. Right? So, what is happening then? So, this particular thing left. Right? But then, at the point of your death, if you were like, you know, now you know the doctor is coming and, you know, putting the stethoscope and looking at the guardian and say, mm -hmm. Settapochi, done. No recovery, right? So when that is, when that uh, impression is given, right, what happens is, then your loved ones will call some monks and the monks will start chanting Pirit. Or some Ayyar will come and chanting something, mantra, to send this person to the uh, heavens, right? So then even you, even in that deathbed, you might understand, okay, I am going to die right now. Nobody is going to help me. They have done everything, so I'm going to die. Now, if you start to think like, oh my God, I can't die. I can't die right now. I can't leave my child, right? I can't leave my wife or my husband. I love you so much, Kiel. I can't leave you. I can't leave my house. I have built all these things. I have money in 10 different savings accounts. You guys will be in trouble if I leave right now, getting those money from those stupid officers in these places, right? So if you get those things into your head, definitely you're going to come back, right? Unfinished business, you will come back. But you will not come back in the same way or the way you expect. Right? You will not come back as a rich man. Maybe you will come back as a cockroach who is just climbing on money. Right? Or if you had a desire for, uh, 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 what do you call, a nice vehicle, you might um, come up as a beggar who is begging in front of a Mercedes-Benz company or something, someplace. Right? We don't know how that will happen because it's not, I mean, the desire is different. Right? How that is going to come is different. Right. So 
if so also this says so when you are i'll come to that later so the practice of yoga if you are being in the present moment understand this try to understand it i'll repeat it right if you are trying to be in the present moment right now right now you are living will you have those cravings will you have those cravings not really right now that's what when you start at a yoga class you sit properly close your eyes world is switched off for you shut your mouth right and then what is what you can consciously feel is your breath or if anybody else feeling the food getting digested and all these things good right i don't think so consciously something that you feel is your breath without a problem without a pain that you can feel maybe at the nasal tract around here or here worst case at least you can feel the stomach is coming out and going in so if you take this body right now that's the only thing happening which you can feel other chemical things are happening of course otherwise you are not living but we can't feel it right so when you are meditating if the world is shut for you if you are not talking if you can't see and talk and if you don't know what you are smelling if you don't know what you are hearing then you focus on your breath inhalation exhalation inhalation exhalation right then when we are doing this yes thoughts do come some nice girl comes some hunky man walks some mercedes benz comes some apartment came yesterday's pizza comes in day before yesterday's whiskey comes in the party comes in the one i danced with without my knowledge comes in right and that particular person's husband comes in right all these things will come in to your head right then what you should do is understand it immediately right now it's not happening right then if you try to fight with your mind at that point don't send me thoughts it will send it will just open the pipes right and send thoughts what you should do is at that point there's a thought comes accept it that's okay right i mean if you are saying like when the fuel prices go up that's okay let's still pump when the thought comes also just say that's okay let it go right so if if you are okay to stay in a pool keep for two days and if that is okay then why you worry about just immediate thought comes to your mind right nothing to worry about so don't fight with your mind your mind is much more powerful than that than you think right so stay here focus on your breath if a thought comes okay that's fine that's okay understood again focus on your breath again when you are like this something called okay understood again come to your breath when you do this for a long time your mind understands there's no point in trying to disturb him right and you also get into a habit you know okay my mind will send me something that's okay darling that's okay it's okay baby right that's totally fine so in that acceptance mode that you are living in your mind will also understand no point this is not the time he is processing let's send these things something somewhere away right so that is of course living in the present moment and that is what you call as meditation right so if you take our brain our brain capacity right now we are not even utilizing 10% even albert einstein didn't use more than 20% right so if you are conscious there are chemically changes happening in your brain these are not superstitious assumptions right right now the modern science have proved it there are changes happening in your brain so your brain functionality will go up right 
So such a person who is fully conscious, meaning the brain is working, higher parts of the brain are working, right? Such a person, you say, when they leave the body, you don't say they even die. When you leave the body, you leave the prana from here on top of the head. Because you may know that top of the head is made out of three places, right? Three cracks are here, right? Even in, I think in Hinduism or somewhere, people used to even crack here, right? So the person, person's prana to leave, but it doesn't, I mean, if you are not fully conscious, just because cracking it, it will not get out from here. You can't send a person by force to heaven. So, or to moksha, right? Otherwise, for unconscious people, you have holes in the body. So from those only, the prana goes out. Right? A fully conscious person, that's where we have the chakras also in this line. Out. Right? So here is a small video to talk about meditation. So in the chapter 4, what we are going to talk about all is how, what, what are the ways and um, how things have been arranged for a person to move to this ultimate consciousness, liberation, right? So here I'm playing a video, it will talk about the meditation and the effect of it on the brain. So first one is an intro video, second one is a scientific experiment, right? So if you have your headphones, please plug it in. Sure. Electrify your metabolism back to teenage levels by eating one half teaspoon of this with water and burning fat. Can you when hear? Still in high school. Jonathan? Oh, okay. Every adult human has. Right, then cancer. Skip Amazingly, when cancer survivors complete. Right, let's go. Switch on the volume. Thousands of years, people have practiced meditation for spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. But from a scientific perspective, how exactly does meditating affect your body? Does it really do anything? It all starts in the brain. During meditation, brain scans see increased activity in regions directly correlated with decreased anxiety and depression, along with increased pain tolerance. The default mode network in particular is activated when one's mind is at rest and not focusing on the outside world and has been found to improve memory, self-awareness, so the point is, the mind is not focusing on outside world, right? That is basically what you call as being in the present moment, which is meditation. Goal setting. Want to be more caring to your friends and family? When scientists compared the brains of Buddhist monks to new meditators, they found the region of the brain associated with empathy to be much more pronounced in the monks. It also literally changes your brain waves, and we can measure these frequencies. Meditators have higher levels of alpha waves, which have been shown to reduce feelings of negative mood, tension, sadness, and anger. And if that wasn't enough, it also also physically changes our brain shape and size. Studies found that after eight weeks of a meditation program, gray matter was more dense in areas associated with learning, memory processing, and emotion regulation. And yet the amygdala, which deals with stress, blood pressure, and fear, had decreased gray matter. When we look at the entire body, not only do we see decreased blood pressure, but it can also increase the variability of your heart rate. And while this may sound harmful, it actually plays a critical role in properly transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout your body. Think you're getting sick? In a study where both meditators and non-meditators were given the flu virus, meditators were able to produce a greater number of antibodies and had increased immune function. If we go a little deeper, we can even see changes on a cellular level. Your chromosomes have protective protein complexes called telomeres, which help reduce damage to your DNA and lower cell death. And a shortened telomere length has been linked to several diseases such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cancer. Amazingly, when cancer survivors completed a meditation program, their bodies showed significant increases in telomere length. 
It's believed that psychological intervention, particularly decreasing stress, has a direct effect on the enzyme telomerase, which has been shown to counteract shortening by adding DNA to the shrinking telomeres. Of course, meditation is not a substitute for other medical advice or a healthy lifestyle. We don't want you leaving this video thinking it will cure cancer. But much like hitting the gym can grow your muscles and increase your overall health, it seems that meditation may be a way of working out your brain with extra health benefits. And since your brain controls, well, all of you, why not relax and say, um, every once in a while. And if you like working out your brain, be sure to get our ASAP Science book. With What's some idea? Yeah, so here's the next video. Okay, so this is basically they are doing an experiment of a monk, right? It doesn't matter whether he's a Buddhist monk or whatever the religion it is, it doesn't matter, right? But with meditation and without meditation, so there are different types of uh, rays in the body, uh, in the brain called alpha rays, uh, gamma waves and all this kind of thing. So they are basically talking about this gamma and alpha waves, the changes of the people who meditates, right? Have a look. Word tune is your rewriting, rephrasing, rewording, expialidocious. Yeah, it's focused on two major domains that meditation. Science has contributed to our understanding of the effects of meditation on the brain and body. The research that we've done on meditation in the brain has focused on two major domains that meditation actually affects. One is attention and the other is emotion. And what we have discovered is that the circuits in the brain that are important for regulating both attention and emotion can be transformed by meditation. The 30,000 foot goal is to use the scientific research to um, understand the nature of suffering and how it can best be alleviated. And Mingyi Rinpoche was one of our first long-term practitioners. Uh, well, this will be strapped onto the arm and uh, we'll get your ratings of how... Uh, the normal, without meditation? Yes, yes, without meditation. Usually when you do this kind of research with either brain electrical measurements or MRI, it takes a lot of what we call post-processing to look at the data. And what post-processing means is simply um, lots of uh, computer algorithms churning at the data after the data is collected. And it often takes um, many, many days of, of computer processing to extract these really weak signals uh, in a lot of noise. Uh, it's finding a needle in a haystack. With Mingyur Rinpoche, we didn't need any fancy post-processing, we actually were able to see a signal with our naked eye. Of course, the first thing we thought is that there's artifact and there's something wrong um, because it, you just, just is not something that we typically would see. And so then we had to go through the entire recording system and take everything apart and put it back together uh, before we convinced ourselves that this is actually real. Then uh, when we discovered that it was real, it was really quite amazing because nobody had ever seen these kinds of signals before for this um, length of time. And what we were looking at are gamma oscillations in the brain. They're very fast frequency brain oscillations, and they're seen in, in, in any ordinary person, but they're seen for very, very short periods of time, typically less than one second. They also don't have such large amplitude. And when Miguel and Pache was meditating, these signals were large, they were highly synchronized, and they lasted for many, many minutes. They lasted for the entire time that the meditation session was in progress. Uh, and that's what made them very visible. So that was really uh, a very important moment because we knew that from a scientific perspective, there was a they are there. We can see that a person who meditates for even just two weeks, 30 minutes a day, is shows a different pattern of brain activity than when they started two weeks before. And that is really important because it suggests that 
the brain really is plastic, that we really can make these changes, and that it actually doesn't take that much. A total of seven hours of practice was sufficient to change the brain in very objective, measurable ways. Well-being and warm-heartedness can be cultivated. Uh, we can think of them almost as skills, which can be enhanced through certain kinds of practice. Right. What's the outcome? So basically, uh, why I wanted to show you this is, um, sometimes people might think, you know, what we are learning can be called it religion, the spiritual, yoga, all these are kind of like stories just to calm down your mind. Right. Something like that, but it doesn't really work like that, right? People don't meditate. People, people don't meditate. Uh, see, look at the contemporary world, current world. Will you do anything if there is no benefit? You won't, right? So people do spend even money to learn meditation, learn yoga. Yoga, if you see. As a business, it's an exotic business, right? People charge massive, right? Because it's an exotic thing, right? The ones who know the value of it, you get drowned in it, right? So, so it's important that you also do your own research, right? You must, within this week, learn there are five or six types of waves in the brain, alpha waves, gamma waves, and all this kind of thing. So uh, let me just show you one more thing. So yeah, so, so these are basically the types of waves in the mind. Let me share the screen. So, so you have the gamma waves, which have a frequency like this. So what the scientist says in a normal person, you can't even see this. This is like very close, right? But with this monk, when he's meditating, those are like, you know, it's clearly visible, right? And problem solving and engaging. So those are the beta waves, relaxing and recharging alpha waves. Uh, dreaming, autopilot states, learning is theta and then delta, deep mind, uh, dreamless sleep. These are the waves. So these waves can be changed. Changing these waves increase the utilization of your brain capacity. When you increase the utilization of your brain capacity, of course, you can do wonders. Right? You can be more conscious. Right? Living in, there is no such a happiness rather than living in the moment, right? So uh, just read about these things. If the frequency is high, what does that mean? If the frequency is low, what does that mean? So when people meditate, what happens? So people with mad minds, so there is another video. It shows a madman's uh, waves, right? So when it uh, cuts a particular frequency, you basically classify that person as a mad person, send him to the mental hospital, right? So likewise, so it is, it is, these are very interesting things to do. And meditation has a big deal to do with this. Meditation has a lot to do with this, right? So therefore, um, what, why I'm saying all these things today is, now if you look at chapter four, chapter four is about serious stuff. Chapter four. Why is this not getting this thing done? Ah, okay, so chapter four is about it. It's actually it's very serious. Chapter one is about definitions. Chapter two is about the Raja Yoga. Chapter three is about increasing from those Raja Yoga and how you can, you know, read other people's minds and all. Let's first of all, I would say, try to read our own mind. Normally we try, we 
on a daily basis we read other people's mind no so for a moment let's try to read our own mind that is important then going inside starting the meditation and you know as a person moving from this life to another life to another life how things are happening why some people are intense with their practice why others are not intense with their practice what is the end point of everybody all these things are there in chapter 4 this is serious stuff right beauty is it has the minimum number of sutras right but it has the heaviest content right so we need to learn that right so i book the time for one and a half hours so i have 10 more minutes are you all okay yeah good so we will start the uh, chapter then right okay so the first sutra in chapter 4 kaivalya pada so this section explain about detachment from worldly life worldly objects and freedom from desires that is basically a prerequisite or you should at least have an attitude like that if you want to live in the present moment right then reach the absolute freedom then raising intelligence to a level it destroys the power of ego right so when you detach and when you get an attitude to detach when you keep on detach your ego basically comes down 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 right then if there is no i i don't have desires right so that power goes away so patanjali has to give a opening he says janma oshati mantra tapah samadhi jah siddhayah what is siddhayah perfections or accomplishments fulfillments right so these things happen for some people it comes through the birth right by birth with aspiration to become perfect so there are some people this yoga all these things comes with their birth so those are these exceptional people like ramana maharishi uh people like them so you can't even understand with a very young age they got into meditation even for an example buddha during a particular festival in the paddy field he was doing anapanasati meditation and everybody was shocked right so some people bring it from the birth why because they have done it for couple of births not couple maybe a big number of births right then some people get the spiritual experience through the herbs drugs right so aushadha so this is basically comes in the siddha medicine so there is something called siddha medicine right so through that you can you basically people get these medicines and all this kind of thing so that can create certain changes some people even take the weeds and hashes and everything and they say when you just smoke it and then you can really concentrate at the present moment you can feel everything and all this kind of thing but um, if we can do it without those things by in engineering inside then it's a full time it's more i would say durable right then by incarnation of name of one's desired deity so this is a mantra so you can chant a particular mantra so what is a mantra it's basically a vibration so this particular vibration also can create a particular opening in the mind good example this japanese scientist i can't remember his name so let me find that for you so he did this uh, experiment with uh, the spirit chanting and water so what he did is he uh, checked the molecule structure of water same glass of water uh, before the spirit chanting and so it was messed up all over the place but then after spirit chanting so he basically so the volume was in very closer this thing and then um, he inspected the molecule structure afterwards afterwards when you inspect it it is arranged in a beautiful pattern right so 
it's quite evident through chanting a particular mantra. So you have to chant. Chant, singing and saying are two different, three different things. You can say a mantra, you can sing a mantra, you chant the mantra, right? If you don't know how to chant the mantra, please don't do it. That will only bring disaster to you, right? So you chant the mantra, of course, if it can change the molecule structure in water, can't it change the molecule structure in your own body? And then will it, won't it give you any uh, chemical changes and changes in your brain and mind? Of course it will, will, right? Then the next one is by tapas. So accomplishments can come through tapas as well. Tapas is basically burning your karma, right? And then the profound meditation, right? So there is a very high chance some people may not come with the janma. Some people, they take the drugs, they take the medicines and they get addicted and they do the drugs. Some people don't know about mantra, mantra chanting. So mantra chanting and all places in India, there are certain villages. They teach the mantra chanting from age of three. Because for you to properly chant a mantra, if you start from age of three, your vocal structure and everything need to be prepared. Then the tapas, then meditation. So you may fall into one of these five and you may want to stick to one of these five. Right? So accomplishment, janma, uh, aushadi, mantra, tapaha, sama, uh, sam, samadhi, jaha, samadhi, jaha, siddhiyaha. Meaning to come to these siddhis, right? come to these next layers, accomplishments in your brain, accomplishments in your mind field. These are the five ways. Some people bring it from the birth. Some people go through medicines. Some people go through mantra. Some people do tapas. Some people focus on meditation. Right? Is that clear to you? Yeah, good. Then, sutra number two. <clears throat> Jati Antara. Now don't uh, uh, mix this with Jati Antara. This is not international, right? Jati Antara Parinamaha Prakrutyaha Apurat. Meaning, what is Jati Antara? Jati Antara in, uh, in another class or change of birth. Jati Antara. One jati, jati is a birth. One jati, second jati, third, fourth, likewise. So you have your different, different lives, which your samsaric cycle has come through, right? So there are different, different lives that you have passed. Those are the jati, antara, right? Uh, parinamaha, parinama is transformation or change. Prakriti, meaning this whole thing that you have think, thought of and built for yourself, right? Apurat, becoming full. So what it means is the abundant flow of nature's energy, the abundant flow of nature's energy brings about a transformation in one's birth, aiding the process of evolution. Okay, so... Uh, Yeah, so this actually, uh, this is, I mean, this Buddha, the Shankara, Ramanuja, uh, all these people attain Kaivali during their lives here on earth without yogic sadhana. This actually um, relates to the previous one, right? So, <clears throat> okay, so what this one tells is, uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> From one life to another life. So this life you have done certain things. And the other life you basically continue from where you stopped and you build. That's how it works. Right? This life you have done certain things. And the next life you are, you have, you are building upon what you have. These things. But karma is 
such that sometimes you must have done something really good here at the point of your death if some karma or some bad karma get more powerful you might be born in the next birth where it will basically not uplift you from there it will take you down from there right so that's where intensity of the practice in your birth is very important right so uh, Yeah, so what this basically tells is this particular parinama, this particular transformation, right? Birth to birth, there are two things here. Number one is if you take the whole animal kingdom itself, so the parinama is happening from time to time, from one birth to another birth to another birth. So the body and my structure parinama is happening for me to be prepared for the next step right so if you take an example the human evolution right there was a monkey then tuck 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 and then the monkey woke up into two feet and then the monkey's limbs and all got smaller but the brain got bigger likewise so that whole that parinama process is happening as a preparation right for a higher consciousness and that is done by the nature itself right the nature the whole system is doing that so the system is supporting you to go there right and on the other side the second meaning is in your life if you are ready if you are ready to explore of course the nature will give you a push specifically if you are on a spiritual journey the nature will not drop you down right when you are in worldly life only you have so much of struggles and so much of obstacles to go so much of things that you have to go through that that is there actually in worldly life because of your own desire because you are not we not you we are not satisfied with what we get but spiritual journey is a place where you drop things right you drop your desire so what is there to lose even that is a clay case, you become like lighter day by day, like a cotton. Then that will be uplifted by the nature. Right? That is sutra number two. Are we clear, guys? Some of the other reason this uh, Teams maneuvering, it's not friendly like Zoom. Right? So I have to always, you know, da 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 da. Right. Is that, are those two sutra clear? Number one, first sutra basically talks about um, your preparedness can come through your birth. Your preparedness can come through uh, medicines. Your preparedness can come through so, uh, mantra. Your preparedness can come through what? What is the other one? I do not remember getting old now. Uh, <laughs> tapas. And the other one basically comes through Samadhi, profound meditation. Second Sutra said, by nature, our body, our structures are being created to go for a higher purpose. That is number one. Number two, if you are ready for a journey, nature will uplift. Right? Number three, this is going to be a good one. Right. Number three, Nimittam Aprayojakha, sorry, Nimittam Aprayojakam Prakruti Nam Varana Bhedastu Tata Kshetra Kshetri Kavat. Right? So, yeah. So, what this says is Nimittam is incident. Nimitt, Nimitta, Nimittam incident. Right? Then aprayojam, prayojana is useful, aprayojana is not useful. It's singhala also, prayojana, aprayojana, right? Uh, prakriti na, the nature, natu, natural tendencies or potentialities, right? So let's not go through one by one. Nature's efficient cause does not impel its potentialities into action but helps to remove the obstacles to evolution, just as farmer builds banks to irrigate his fields. 
So when a farmer is irrigating, you know the nearer, right? So you know the liadi, right? And so, so you have this liadi like this, and the water need to come in. So you have a water stream. So this farmer's job is at a particular point, he will stop the water stream. Then at a particular time, he will let the water come, right? But controlled. Then he will let more water to come. So likewise, he will basically, for his irrigation, he will, by giving the water, it will, uh, the, the, the irrigation will happen very well, right? So what this means is, it's just like that, so if you are ready, if you are into the particular spiritual path, the nature will keep on pushing you and uplift. Right? If you are ready for a spiritual path, nature will keep on pushing you. Right? Wherever you are in the world, it will come after you because it's like this. When the soil is ready, you have to put the seeds and the seeds will become plants. Plants will give you crops. And plants will not only give you crops, plants will give you shelter. It will further fertilize the soil. It will provide uh, nest to animals. It will provide food to animals, right? And it will also provide fruits, right? And then once the fruit is basically given, the purpose of that purpose of that particular plant is done, right? So if that plant, if it is a good seed, right? If it is a good seed and if you put it in the soil, basically the soil will take care of it, right? So that's what it says. The So these, these support that you get by the nature, is not a coincidence, right? So aprayojana, so for an aprayojana thing, it doesn't happen like that. For prayojana thing, only it happens like that, right? So if there is a prayojana, of course it goes. Otherwise, now imagine there are certain things that we try to plant, right? And sometimes those things are really hard to plant, so you have to inject chemicals to the uh, soil and everything, right? But on the same time, there are certain seeds. You don't need any chemical or whatever because the seed is good, right? Seed is able to sprout. So you put it anywhere, it will come up, right? So um, this sutra, I, I will just read whatever given here. It has not copied and pasted properly. Um, what it says is, it's a nice one. Yeah, this sutra is a beauty in itself. Nature's energy now flows abundantly in the sadhaka, right? This sutra is a beauty in itself. Nature's energy now flows abundantly in the sadhaka. This energy is built up and concentrated through the practice of asana pranayama bandha, which can be thought of the uh, dikes in the system to regulate and channel energy so that mind and intelligence may diffuse evenly throughout one's being, right? Do you understand what I just said? No way, is it? No way or Australia, okay, good. So, good, so what it says is, <clears throat> how to put this? All right, so nature does not support harmful things, right? For a person to make an atomic bomb, how hard is that? Do you find atomic bombs just on the soil? When you dig the soil, do you get atomic bombs and then it will kill, right? No. So why even nature reacts in certain ways that it kills people, earthquakes, tsunamis and all, why? Sometimes because the destruction that the humans have made is really high. So the nature is reacting. Okay. So I see the one and a half hours is actually making people very sleepy. Right. Okay. So <laughs> um, 
So what it tells is one in a million, you will find a proper sadhaka. If the nature identifies a proper sadhaka, nature will do anything and everything to uplift the sadhaka. I am not saying this. Patanjali's Yoga Sutra has written this. I didn't, I am not interpreting it in any different other way, right? So, if somebody get a particular help, let's say, if somebody found some teacher and that teacher just talked five words with you and it suddenly patas, it made a realization in you. It's not a coincidence. It's not something happened by mistake. It doesn't happen to everyone. If the seed is good, if the seed is healthy enough to go in the journey, only you get the fertilizers and the uh, help, right? So if anyone of you get such a help, understand you are being chosen as one in a million. Everybody don't get it, right? So when the nature is supporting you, please go with the flow. Patanjali is telling, I'm not, right? This is not my explanation, right? Um, right, so I'll read this one as well. So past good actions indirectly become instrumental in accelerating the flow of natural tendencies for the good of the consciousness. What you have done in past. The farmer heaps up the banks of the earth to collect water and soak part of the field. The same story that I told you, yeah. Through yogic discipline, the yogi removes all obstacles to his evolution and enjoys emancipation. So what can you do as a good seed is, number one, if you get fertilizers, right, consume the fertilizer and grow. And if you want to grow better, you have more tools as well, such as yoga asana, pranayama, pratyahara, start practicing, you know, being honest, don't lie, stop killing, right? All these things, you have eight limbs itself, right? So if you are a good seed, I, we can see, right, even the group had how many people, right now the good seeds are here, right? So if you are a good seed, when you are given fertilizers, consume the fertilizer, right? And then become an aid. Don't think, okay, I am a good seed. Let the God give me wisdom. Then I'll be like, you know, done by the end of it. No, you, if you are a good sadhaka, that's why they say sadhaka, meaning the one who do it, they are sadhana, right? Continue vairagya abhyasa. Without an attachment, continue your work. Continue your yoga asana. With yoga asana, you are not building the physique, right? You are practicing awareness pranayama you are basically channeling your energies to all over the places right pratyahara you learn to give rather than expecting right and uh, so basically you have all these tools right so be a help to the nature to help you right so if somebody let's say if somebody is helping you to get a job for an example right so when the person comes up with an opportunity to you, if the person is asking you 101 documents, can you please give this to me in one day? Please work your ass off, get those 101 documents and give it to them. Right? Otherwise, you will not get the job. Right? Nature can reject you as well. The seed is there. We gave whatever we can give. But the seed is not doing its job. We have done everything because sometimes for a good seed, if you put too much fertilizer, seed will die as well. Right? So you are, a, if you are a good seed, when you are getting fertilizer, do your yoga sadhana to absorb it well. Right? Then you will be uplifted. Then you will become a little tree. Then the nature will give you further fertilizer. Then you still you do your yoga sadhana. Then you will become a bigger tree bigger tree, bigger tree, bigger tree, and then finally you will reach your purpose. Right? Are we clear up to that point? Yeah. I thought of stopping from there. Keep that thought in your mind. And that is very, very important. Right? If you go to the other part of the world, if somebody come and gave you a book to read, 
that's not coincidence. The coincidence doesn't happen like that, right? If you go, I mean, I don't know. So coincidence, there's nothing called in this life called coincidence. Do you believe in coincidence? Something happened to me accidentally. Your nature is not stupid. We, we are stupid to interpret it as a coincident. Right? But nature is not stupid. Yeah. Good. I will take few questions. I will answer some questions. We will stop the session before that. Yeah. So, and meditation, just do 10 minutes a day as a start. Okay. Good. And Sinanjali Mudra, close your eyes, take deep, good deep breaths. Inhale. Purnamadana Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Am Shanti 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 Yapam Oh